I want you to be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to take in some things that I think some of us have forgotten. And I would like to ask if, well, we're going to be uploading it. But it's crucial. So I hope everybody, even if they come later, they're in the fellowship. These are some things. Let me explain to you. We are born to be. We are created to be his vessel. We are created to simply be vessels of honor inhabited by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And a lot of time what happens is that we don't understand his desire to take over all of us. When you say, when you say to the Lord, be captain of my ship. Take me over. A lot of times we just mean a little part of me. The desperation is not there. I'll tell you something, saints. There's a desperation in the soul of the Christian that when they hear his presence, like Jesus, when they heard he was walking, they would, they would flock to him. The crowds would come. And they would, they would just, never mind, later on, they betrayed him. They didn't even fully understand why they flocked to him. Because you see, we cannot live without his life in us. It is his life in our life that really makes us alive. And a lot of times, the things in us that are not of him, demonic spirits and lots of other things. I want, I want you to, I want you to understand something. God is raising up a mighty army. But the reason why there are pockets of this army, many of us are not yet seen is because we have to understand certain things. If this was a plant pot, it's not, it's what we use for the offerings. But if this was a plant pot and I put a plant in here and I just wanted this plant to be watered and there are rocks inside of this plant pot, you can ask anyone who's a gardener, unless it's a type of plant that requires just rocks around it. We're talking about normal plants that have soil. When you have too many rocks, what happens is, what happens, Gardner, Mr. Gardner? The root stones, the root stones spread. The roots will wither up and die because the rocks are blocking it. So a simple plant, if you put rocks in and you have soil and you're watering, those roots cannot spread. So they wither up and die. This is what is happening to us as Christians because I'm going to share some things with you this afternoon. And for some of you, it's not that you haven't heard it, you know. But there is a season for hearing some things. It's going to register further because it is critical to the roots, our roots, our spiritual roots growing deep, our fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit coming forth. And what's happening is the roots in the average Christian are not growing deep enough. Some roots are withering and the fruit that is coming forth reflects the root. And there are some roots that have to be removed because when we are grafted onto that vine the true vine any demonic roots 
have to be cut away so that the roots that begin to take that, that, that go deep and the fruit that comes forth it's because he's increased and I've decreased and what's happening is we're settling for a halfway kind of plant it's doing okay looking all right I'm sure there's some plants you see them they're okay but if you really see what they could become when they are watered and there's nothing there blocking their roots going down you will see a totally different plant our problem is we don't understand when he looks at us what he sees what he sees what he calls us to we don't know so we look at ourselves and we're like i'm sure there's some plants like that you look at it not too bad till you see the real thing with the flowers and the fruit and you say wow is this the same that's the same plant i saw in my backyard and you go by your friend who really know about plants and you see what this plant looks like saints please i beg you don't stay in your backyard you need to understand you've got to see what those plants look like and the thing is you gotta trust him because you see he is the gardener he is the vine dresser he is the one that does the snipping he knows when he snips away what he's snipping but what's happening with us is that we look in the mirror I understand because I'm not a big time gardener so sometimes when something's springing up and looking okay I'm like whoa it's looking okay I don't really know what it's looking like until somebody like our friends here bring a plant and I say okay that's how it's supposed to look saints listen to me we are in a season where God is pulling out all the stops for his people unfortunately just like in the days of Jesus don't look for numbers started off big but when they realized what it was going to be like to allow this spiritual gardener to deal with the stuff in them when he started to speak words that seemed to be a little too much they walked away the road is narrow saints few will find it do not let yourselves be influenced by your friend who's happy with the little plant they have you look at what through the eyes of the spirit when God says what he's doing for his church how he calls his church you keep your gaze on the Lord and always remember few will find a narrow road so don't don't be looking for numbers to make you feel great because desperation is what sends people in here today desperation desperation I'm desperate do you know that pastor Stephen I'm desperate I'm desperate and I'm desperate for you all to walk in the authority and the freedom that you're called to walk in don't let anybody look at you and call you a quail up plant and leave you there and you only see yourself as quaily quaily that's not who you are so I want you to know first of all I'm giving you one part now and I'm giving you one part later I can't give all you too much it will be too much God wants his living water that they have some earth that needs saturating and that comes with the worship the healing rain that comes when we worship hallelujah I want you to remember when we read Isaiah 61 that you've heard over and over you're gonna hear it and I'm going to share some things with you so I hope you can take notes or you get the message find a link when it's uploaded Isaiah 61 says 
The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. You are called oaks of righteousness. You are to be planted and to be said of you, you are a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So when you settle, settle for quaily quaily, that's not... You see, we don't, we don't read the word because I'm going to tell you in Luke 4, 18, Jesus spoke in the synagogue and he said, this day is this scripture. This is the scripture that was fulfilled because he came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to preach the good news. He came to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners. He came to comfort all who mourn. He came so that the church, his people will be called oaks of righteousness and will display his splendor. So when he came, he fulfilled this prophetic word and we follow him. And through the blood of Jesus, this is the call. Now how does that happen? You don't just become an oak. If you know what an oak tree is, an oak tree is, is do you understand what I'm saying? An oak tree is one of the biggest trees with the widest branches if you look up what an oak tree is and can you understand an oak tree displaying his splendor saints listen to me some of you don't see yourselves as an oak tree an oak of righteousness for the display of his splendor i need you to follow me today because too many of us have settled to be like a quailed up little plant and if we're not careful we look like a weed i don't know about you i take the word of god literally i will not settle for anything less than being an oak of righteousness for the display of his splendor. I want you to underline that in your Bibles. You're nothing less. Nothing less because when someone calls you by any other name, you look in the wood, you say, I am an oak of righteousness. I am a planting of the Lord for the display, display of his splendor. Somebody here today is getting healing in their spirit because they'd forgotten who God said he was and the purpose for which he has called them. And today, he says to you, you are an oak of righteousness. You are a planting of the Lord. You are created to display the Lord's splendor. And I want you to know that the devil does not want that. So there are certain ways and things that happen. And what is, what is really concerning 
is that it's as if we're going around in a circle, but you're not. I'm here today to tell you, please God, that I'll be able to share everything. I'm here today to tell you there are areas and principles that we don't understand that is blocking us from becoming oaks of righteousness. First of all, I'm going to share with you right now. The enemy will seek you out. And you are going to find out today the way he comes into our life and he causes us to become stuck because if rocks fall into where plant is, the roots can't expand. And we, sometimes we don't know what to do. We're not taught. We don't understand. I'm going to say two quick things to you. And then I'm going to backtrack a little bit because you need to know this. There are two things you have to remember today. And I really want to get to the two of them. Demons, fallen angels, whatever you want to call them. Some people have a big talk about whether it's a fallen angel or demon. Let me tell you, it comes from Satan, okay? They're part of his army. They will attack you, and I want you to understand something here. If a demon, now your spirit man, cannot be taken over. That's where the Holy Spirit came in. And once you know that you've gotten that conviction of the Holy Spirit and your, your, your spirit man has become alive, you know there's your mind, your will, your emotions that the enemy can infiltrate but not your spirit man. So I want you to know two things. I want you to understand and we are going to leave here today understanding what I'm about to share. Legal rights. When the enemy has legal rights to your mind, to your soul, to your emotions, that is going, that, that says, when we explore it, how he got in. Legal right, how he got in. If I have, and I'm going to explain it further, but you need to understand something here. If I have torment going on in my head, if I suffer from all kinds of things that I know are keeping me back, I can't read the word as I should, I can't pray as I should. And you've been coming to tarry in, and you're, and you're taking in everything that's been offered. Now I have to tell you, there are those who do not, do not take advantage of everything that God is offering. So you'll find that they get a little tingly, tingly feeling. And that, that does them good for the week and they come back the next week again. Okay, post-COVID, they have a lot of Sunday tingly, tingly people. I am talking about the desperate ones that know Sunday is not enough. Because when they followed Jesus, they didn't sit and say, the disciples didn't say, okay, well, I'm with you today, eh? So don't bong to be around you tomorrow. You see, we don't even understand what disciple means. When the Great Commission talks about disciple and tell the world who I am. Churchianity brought in the once a week. Jesus was with his disciples all the time. And yet in three years, they still had not fully understood. So we are called... Every moment we get, whatever he is offering us, take advantage of it. Because I want you to know that if you have been seeking him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have not gotten 
deliverance of whatever's tormenting you, before we could even start to do anything, we need, and there are ways, through the word of God, we do this all the time, to ask the Lord, how did that demon come in? How did it get in? That's legal right. Because you could pray for somebody from now till the cows come home. And if you don't know what the legal right is that is keeping that demon there, it will stay there. And the second thing that I'm going to teach you is about strongholds. Because strongholds is what allows it to stay in. So you have legal right, how it got in. What was the open door? And stronghold is why it continues to stay in. So sometimes you see people come into church, seeking God, crying out, but they are not getting the breakthrough. Because there is a lot of, not in this church, I can't support what I'm about to say. Pray with your cast out the demon. Pray with you for the breakthrough. Let me tell you all something to start off with. And I'm going to share further. I'm not going to run ahead too much. If someone has been tormented and you want to pray down the place and bind and cast out the tormenting spirits, if we don't know what caused those tormenting spirits to come in the first place. And there are many ways of knowing this. All that will happen is, you might cast them out, but if you don't know what caused them to be there, and the continued environment or behavior continues, more will come back. Save your energy. I'm not wearing myself down. Because many people are coming for help, but they are not prepared to do the hard work that is required. They'll go to a doctor. They'll sit down on the doctor. Sam, give me a sheet, please. They'll give, they, they, you'll go to the doctor, and they will, you will get a form to fill out one of the forms. You'll get a form to fill out and you will happily sit down and tick off the form. Tick, tick, tick. You'll go and tell everybody at a full physical, you'll pay thousands of dollars, right? They call you to do a ECG, whatever they call, boom, you go in. But you come into his presence, you say, you want him to increase and you to decrease. Let me tell you something. You could pray your way into increasing, decreasing, nothing increasing and nothing decreasing if you don't begin to understand that the root which is the stronghold that causes the fruit to be born if that root don't come out, that fruit will continue. And furthermore, if you want to maintain your freedom, you must know how it got there in the first place. Because we can give demons legal rights, even in ignorance. I'm going to break it down for you. You see, people come and this thing is bothering me and my heart is beating fast. And listen to me. I want us to understand. Take some time. The ones catching on are the ones who are accessing the group sessions that are uploaded for everybody to listen to. I guarantee you, 50% of the church is not listening to them. But they want to sing, Father increase and I decrease. It's not going to happen if the rocks that are there are blocking the Holy Spirit from increasing. But you could pray. You could sit down and pray. You could sit down and pray, change my heart, oh God, all you want. For lack of knowledge, you will perish. 
because the stoniness in your heart if you want the Holy Spirit to remove the root of what the stoniness is then you've got to spend some time learning about some of the ways that we have found ourselves involved in that I'm going to show you today that have caused that condition. It will require time, just like with a doctor. You will tick through things and then the doctor will say, I need you to go on this diet or I need you to take this pill. And the older you get, the more they will want to tell you. And we will follow the doctor most times. But we don't follow what Dr. Jesus says. And then we continue and wonder why it is. There's an improvement and then it stops. Or there are those who there is fruit and then this fruit is not, is not, is not coming forth and it's not coming forth. I'm going to share some things from this form in a minute. I need you to remember I'm coming back again. I'm coming back to legal rights and strongholds in a moment. But I want us to understand something here. This is the posture that we are to have. As we want the Lord to set us free, set, what, set us free from the things that have us bound, if we want the Lord to heal our broken heart, if we want the Lord in teaching us the word, the word to take root, you need to understand that what the enemy does is that the enemy will, do, will study you, will study your weaknesses, will study the areas where you are not being obedient. And then you're going to find those are the areas where you are going to, that's, that's where the blockages begin to come. But there is hope. But we've got to be invested. We've got to be invested. Too many of us have taken this whole, well, the blood. It's because of the blood. We're okay. Yes, it is. It's through the blood. Through the blood. And because of the blood. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to pick the word up for you. Nobody's going to force you to listen to a message on deep hurts so that every time somebody tells you something you're not going to feel this this pain every time somebody talks to you feeling hurt because that's not how we call to be and we get satisfied with it we think it's okay we think it's okay when somebody corrects us, we get angry and then we calm down and we say, okay, I went to God and I confessed it. And tomorrow you do the same thing and the week after you do, well, you know, I'm getting a little better. You know, here's what. By now, that spirit of self-control ought to be in place. That will mean the spirit of God is increased. And whatever was of Satan has decreased. You see, we look at ourselves and we're like, well, we're okay. Yes, we are, but we're not where we are called to be saints. So there are some things we, we've got to, we, we have to choose. The choice is there. You can be a Christian that comes into the sanctuary. Listen, you could come for tarrying. You could come for Bible study. You could come for Sunday service and that's plenty because a lot of people don't necessarily come to all. And you will stay with those rocks, right? there because there's a part of deliverance that requires us to apply what God is teaching us through his word so sometimes you'll find that those who are in the deep hurts group is not because they're so hurt is because they want to find out how does God today heal deep hurts how do deep hurts manifest because they, they want to disciple people. How, do, how are you going to disciple the people? Saints, how do you disciple? Do you understand the Great Commission says? Go and make disciples of all men. And teach them everything I've taught you. What do you think that it's just sitting down and let's read Psalm 18 today. And let's, let's meet and have some coffee and talk about Matthew 7. That's not discipling. That's reading the Bible to them. 
But there's a great commission we are all called to answer. So when you sit with someone and you begin to read the word to them and they begin to tell you, but you know I'm not feeling good today at all. I'm feeling real down. Let me pray for you then. You could pray. Nothing wrong with that. But how about, how about not just taking the horse to the water and saying, drink the water. How about telling the horse, you see that thirst that you have? This is what has happened. And you see that root of whatever it is that's causing how you're feeling. You see, it's real easy for us to say, let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. It's good for our ego. I mean, let's get real. Maybe you all don't pray with people because of your ego. I mean, I certainly don't, but sometimes we like to be needed. Somebody must call us for prayer. How about you disciple the person so they know how? They know how. They got so in the first place and they could pray for themselves. And whatever it is attacking them doesn't continue. It stops. That's discipline. That's why I'm just amazed when I ask people and I say, anybody wants to learn how to teach and disciple others, in terms of people are, let me tell you, people are, you see it. They say preach good news. Yeah, I could do it a little microphone and I'll preach the word. Okay, fine. We know about that. How about helping? How do you disciple someone who's broken hearted? How do you, how do you proclaim freedom for the captive? How do you release from the darkness, prisoners. That's discipline. What you think that in reading the word to someone who is oppressed, who feels hopeless, suicidal thoughts, you're going to just read the word and they're going to get better? Then why is the church of Jesus Christ in such a mess? Because the rocks that are there that are blocking, we've not been taught how to deal with those rocks and teach others how to deal with it. I don't know why. Well, this could not be the only church. I'm sure it isn't. But I'm saying to you, you are not answering the call of the Great Commission. If your answer to me is always, well, you know, Rev, you do that, but we can't. So you tell me you can't disciple. Because I'm not a psychologist. This is why I want to speak to those who understand we are called to be oaks of righteousness. We are called to be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Settle for nothing less. Settle for nothing. Listen to me. There's a comatose spirit that has come upon the church. Where it seems as if, it seems as if it's okay to settle for anything less than being an oak displaying his splendor. And that's what's happened. And, and you look at your friend or you look at your relative and you look, I good. I good. They are not anything like oaks, but you're measuring yourself with other people. We fall far short when we look at the word of God. And God says there is a way. But the road is narrow and few will find it. It's for a remnant. Are you part of the remnant? Can you give Pastor Stephen something like tea? Oh, because he's tired. He's been going all day. He's falling asleep. He has to ride back up the highway after this. He's ridden down and he's going back up. So it's understandable. Listen very carefully and I want you to understand. 
I'm going to get into the legal rights and the strongholds because if you don't know what is causing that bondage to stay in you and you don't know how it got there in the first place, you are not going to be set free. You'll go to heaven, but you'll live a life of torment and not walk in a destiny that Christ has called you to. Because the Lord knows you love him. But you don't have to be walking in bondage. Because he came to set the captives free. So, I want you to remember that there are three people that are involved in your deliverance. And I mean deliverance from the things that are blocking your mind, things that are blocking in your heart, things that are just blocking you from, from, from just the roots going down deep in your life. There are three people involved. There's God, there's your disciple. Notice I did not say pastor because I am a pastor. I am a disciple. All of you, aside from being a royal priesthood, are all disciples. You will have to answer to God if after you all get these teachings, you say, well, I can't disciple. Not me, I can't. Because the mandate is the Great Commission. It's just our understanding of what that is. Teach them everything I've taught you. We're being taught. You see, God is not going to wave any kind of magic or rod or whatever. I hate to use the word magic, but you understand what I'm saying, and deliver you. He could if he wants. But the reason why he does not tend to do it that way is because if you don't know what caused you to be in bondage in the first place? You will never maintain your freedom. Whatever leaves, seven more wicked of each one will come back. You never pray with an unbeliever for them to be delivered of something demonic. I know there are churches that do it. They don't ask if the people are saved. They just start to pray. You are, you are harming that person spiritually because in six months' time, they will be worse because you've not started from the basics. And that's why, I listen, in Tarian, I could begin to pray and I could begin to cast demons out. And those of you who've been here before, you know they leave. No big drama, but they will leave. You'll feel them leaving. For what? You know what the Lord showed me? In many people come into Tarian and in many people come into church, they are not walking in the, and maintaining the freedom. They are not making permanent decisions to change lifestyles. So when they are getting deliverance, those demons are coming back. We need to be equipped. The foundation has to get stronger. We have to start learning what has caused us to be like this in the first place. So I want you to know that God has limited himself to not violating our free will. And you know what that means? For lack of knowledge, we will perish. So if we don't learn and apply, we have choice. God has limited himself to our free will. He will not override our free will. So you can sit for years in a church, never learn certain things. For lack of knowledge, we perish. Or you can sit in a church and learn. Choose not to apply. God's not going to override you. And that's why I say to you, and I say it respectfully. Please understand it's respectful. I'm not one of these pastors that every time you say pray for me, I'm jumping up. I'm not. Because to start off with, if you've been in church for donkey's years, and by that mean by many years, and you still have to ask somebody to pray for you, it either means you've come in from a church where you did not learn anything about discipling, about warfare, about anything. But not only that, it keeps you dependent on me when you're supposed to be dependent on God. What it tells me is not that anything is wrong with asking for prayer, is that you need to be taught 
what is the legal right for whatever is constantly harassing you? We're talking about constant. We're not talking about your finger hurting anymore. One mere green prayer that, that you, you know, your finger gets better. That's different things. Okay, welcome. But I need you to know that at the end of the day, you need to be taught so that together the Lord will show us what is the legal right of this thing that comes upon you in cycles or torments your head or you're fine, you're just not able to read the Bible and one minute you can, one minute you can't. That's the first thing. Second thing is what's keeping it there? What's keeping it there? Because you could leave here, you could get breakthrough and you could go home and go right back. Maybe it's in your environment. So me, let me tell you something. I don't care who begs. I'm not wearing myself down because I'm not the answer. It's a work of the spirit. It's a work of the spirit. And we have to do the work to get to the root of these things. And there are many of you, you are. You are. See some of the faces, you're up in the groups. You're requesting the group session. If all your Christian walk is the Sunday, you are in a bad way. If you are not learning anything else but what is preached on Sunday, and I guarantee you, if I ring your phone Sunday night and ask you what you heard Sunday morning, you can't remember any hell. That's why we tape it. So you could go back and listen. Chances are nobody's going back to listen. They don't have time. Nobody has time today. But I'm here to tell you, he calls us to be oaks of righteousness to display his splendor. He calls the church to be corporately without spot and wrinkle. And I know many of us have that desire but just don't know how. And some of us thought once we come to church, that's all that matters. And if we're struggling with things that are there all the time, okay, but I'm a good person. Yes, you are, but you're not the you're not walking in the, in, the, in the destiny. You're not walking in the potential. You're not walking as an oak of righteousness, displaying God's splendor. But, you know, you're a good person. Souls that God has planned to send to you, 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 you miss in. You can't minister to them because the anointing has not increased as it should. The anointing is supposed to be increasing on every single person. Every day, it's supposed to be getting more and more. So that when you go out there, the aroma of Christ goes forth. So I want you to know that the demons or the fallen angels that afflict and torment, that torment us, will continue to do so until we take action. They've gained power over us because we've opened the door or gateway to them. Which is the legal right that the enemy has. Whatever door we opened, the gateway. This is not complicated, eh, y'all? We, we walk and journey with people. But what's happening, a lot of the group sessions, they're getting their breakthroughs because corporately they're learning together. So they're like, oh my gosh. Somebody told me up to this morning, they said to me, Block memories are getting unblocked. You want me to tell you all something? That person doesn't even have access to the teachings. It's just the little pieces that they get when they're talking to me or because they don't have access. But memories are getting unblocked because they like to take notes. Once they're hearing something, they write it down. God is working with that. Because not everybody has access to the teachings. Not everybody has internet. I want you to know they gain power over us because we've opened the door to them. We can be equipped to close that door. But in closing the door, which is removing the legal right, we've got to understand that it's not just come out or close the door. 
depending on what it is, there are life changes, there may be environmental changes, there may be things we are accustomed listening to that we have to stop. So our free will is that if we are to get the breakthrough that we are asking God for, in renouncing and taking back what the enemy has stolen, that area in our life, it's going to require some effort, saints. I don't know who told us that once we accept, in fact, it's not even accepting Jesus, because who are we to accept him? It's a conviction of the Holy Spirit that comes upon us that we need God. And that conviction comes and it's a move of the Holy Spirit. But we do have to make the choice to say, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead and I want him. I am desperate for him. It's a conviction that leaves you in tears because you are now facing the sinfulness of your nature. And nobody could shake it from you. You just know you need Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying? So when that happens, and then you realize there's areas that need cleaning out because somebody told you years ago, once you accept Jesus and once you, whatever you say to him, it's, oh, it's great. It's, oh, listen to me. Don't lie to people. You all don't ever tell them that. That's when the transformation has to begin by the renewing of the mind, by areas in there, in your heart, being set free because sometimes as you're convicted and you come to the Lord what is going to happen is you may then start to struggle with certain things in your life I want you to know the more committed cooperative diligent patient and teachable we are is the more freedom we will attain and this is the problem the more committed, cooperative, diligent, patient, and teachable we are, the more freedom we will walk in. It's not just we're saved and we come into his presence and, ooh, and then we go home and we tell somebody, listen to me, every person you tell about Jesus, I want all of you to know every week, they are going to be watching to see if the anointing is stronger on you. You wouldn't know that. They'll say, well, no, I saved. Listen to me. Stop telling people about Jesus if you are not wanting to do the work to partner with the Holy Spirit for the breakthroughs to occur in your life that when you come back and see them the next week, they know you've been with Jesus. They know Jesus living in you. Come back the next week, they're like, hmm. You know what keeps people away from coming to church? Us. Because we talk, 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 talk about Jesus. But every week we're the same way. If that's happening to you, stop telling people about Jesus. You're turning them off because they don't want to hear you anymore. What they want, and nobody could make this happen, it's a move of the Spirit, is that there's something about you. You don't even have to open your mouth and say, they will know. And every week you go around them, there's something else. And that's why we are called to not stay with those things in us. Anytime you're a Christian who has reached a point where, okay, I'm saved, I'm attending church, I'm learning these things, boom, okay, here I am again, I'm learning more. Boom, I'm gone again. If you are not taking these things and you are not starting to apply it and beginning to see results, you are not taking the planks out of your eyes. That's what taking the plank out is. Saints, us. It's about us taking the planks out. The Lord says, take the plank out. He didn't say, he will take the plank out. There are some things when we learn the planks go as we apply it, 
I'm not telling you it's not a move of the Holy Spirit, but I have to pick the word up. I have to sit down and I have to make my notes. Look, look, I have notes. This is my notes. I had to sit and study. I had to make notes. What do you think? You think it just so? And the thing about it is if, if we don't find a way to either make notes or go back again, it's going in one ear and coming out the next. You just heard some good information and then you're going nowhere fast. I want you to know this is a message of love. I'm not fooling anyone. I'm not going to stand up here and say, you know, you just come in and worship and don't forget the offering. I pay that too. And then go back and as a great Christian, let me tell you something. God is raising up a remnant who is hungry for him and who will not settle for anything less than being an oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And it will not matter about numbers because that remnant already know the road is narrow and few will find it. They are not prideful, they are hungry. And they will not settle for anything less. I want us to know that as I, as I go through a couple other things, because I'm going to pause, have some time of worship, but saints, listen, you know he comes when we worship. I mean, who is you here earlier? His presence is here. There's no doubt when, when children done, when the children of God are together and we worship, and daddy comes. But listen to me. It's about time. Daddy doesn't hold back though there's more that he wants to pour out that we can handle because you know if he poured out everything we would all drop to the ground we wouldn't be able to move but what about us what about this vessel are we not tired of coming to worship him and live in the same way you get a little tingly tingly and you know the presence of the lord here but what about change what about fruit what about the things that have us bound this is not an intellectual relationship with god of when you feel you are ready if you are surrendered it is so that his spirit will increase and we will decrease and there are some things that are keeping us back but i'm going to tell you quickly and then i'll pause so remember Number one, make sure you really have been converted and it's not a false conversion. I've said this before. You can find the message, are you really born again? I am never taking it down because I'm coming across people who thought they were born again and they're now realizing they're now born again. So there's false conversions. I want you to know that as you continue to learn, all those imaginations and false doctrines and practices have to, be, have to be changed. Those things have to stop. So there will be, and this is, comes from Bible study, this comes from study of the word, where truth comes forth. I'm not going to go into detail of each one. I want you to let you know. It's not just somebody praying for you and then, okay, something left and then, okay, and tomorrow is the next day. No. This is the life. How, what are the legal rights? How did those spirits, what caused them to come in in the first place? Was it generational? Was it something that we were exposed to? Because the more you are in the word, you become sensitive to certain things that happen in your life and God will begin to show you. As I will share with you some forms that we are using that will help people even more understand what is causing them to respond and behave in ways that they are not supposed to it's not biblical you've got to know how to tear down strongholds and strongholds as i said is what keeps the demons there very similar to legal rights but not quite the same legal rights is how it came in stronghold is what's keeping it there two totally different things if you have to remember anything today, it's legal right and stronghold. Because if you are not getting the breakthrough that you should, it's because they have a legal right and there's something there that's keeping them. It's like a fortress. That's what it is. 
repetitive behavior, whatever it is, there's something there. But we always deal with the root and the fruit will change. We don't have to start dealing with anything else, but it's the root and that takes time. But you could, you could have a lawn where all you do is cut the tops of the weeds and the weeds will go back. And you cut the tops of the weeds and the weeds will go back. That's how some Christians are. Things start to grow back. One year later, I need more prayer. The same thing I came for prayer a year ago is come back again because the root is there. Here's what you need to do. Begin to access help on a regular basis. And it doesn't mean always seeing me because I'm sending a lot of stuff out. A lot of stuff. The editors at one point were begging for relief. I said, I actually can go 10 times faster. Did I not say that? I said, I'm holding back and you all are saying it's too much. They weren't complaining. And they were just like, I said, okay, I'll be more conscious when I talk. So there aren't too many things, meaning like, you know, let's pick something up off the ground. They have to edit that up, out and so. Because there is 10 times more stuff that I want to teach and send out that God wants his people to know. Because we're going to get there. So you've got to remove the legal rights. Tear down the strongholds. That's keeping them there. Those two things. Those two main things. But also too. What comes with that is closing the demonic doorways. By that time those demons are weak. And they'll either leave or they get cast out. That's why I'm not... Listen, sometimes I pray with somebody and they immediately begin to get deliverance. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. But I'm not setting out to cast out unless I know this is what, this is, the, this is the work they've put in. Because I know if we don't find out the legal rights and remove it, if we don't tear down the strongholds, if we don't shut those doors, those demons is a big fight down. Or they hide and you think they've gone, they haven't or they'll come back. But many times what's happening to people is they are getting deliverance through this process without any fight down. Though there are times when we do have to come in agreement and cast out demons. In other words, the key to deliverance and the key to maintaining your freedom is proper discipleship. That's not just reading the word of God to the person. So I want to say this to you before we pause again. I want to say to you that many times there's broken heartedness and bruised souls. Those are spiritual attacks. The enemy has found a way to break your heart. Now a human could be used, but the fact is you have a broken heart, you're bruised, Soul wounds. That's what a soul wound is. It's a wound of the, of the mind and the emotions. The enemy will use it to attack you over and over and over again. Anytime there's traits and characteristics, behaviors, traits that do not line up with the word of God, you know there is a need for deliverance. And this is why I want to say this, saints. I hope you're, you're getting it. There are traits and characteristics and behaviors that we do over and over. And we tell ourselves, well, I'm a sinner. And so it's okay. I'll just say I'm sorry to the next day. I'm asking you, please, if you want to be an oak of righteousness, to display his splendor. You see that repetitive behavior? You see that trait and characteristic that has nothing to do with the word of God? Please, don't let it be something that just because, okay, well, Jesus died for me, so tonight I'm going to say I'm sorry and tomorrow is a new day. Start to write down those traits. Start to write down those characteristics because that is where we're being fooled. That I'm a Christian, I'm saved. 
So the traits and characteristics, the repetitive behaviors, the things that cause others pain in your home or you know very well are sinful, it's not okay to leave it till the next time. And I'm talking now at the lowest level because there are those that have a higher level of bondage where they just can't even think straight at night, where they're constantly, their heart is in pain. So that's even more bondage. Don't settle for that. But you know what is the sad thing? The ones with more bondage, the ones with more pain, the ones with the things that just I can't function, they go get set free. You know why? Because they have those of us that figure those lesser things. Let me call them lesser because they're not really taking over your life. You can still hold on a job. You can still sleep at night, but you're not walking in your destiny and in the potential that Christ has called you to. You will be judged the same way. You will be judged the same way because sin is sin is sin is sin. God said obey. He has given us everything for life and godliness. And if you settle for the lesser sins in you, because sister and brother, they're all bound up, you know? When the Holy Spirit flow in, you know, things start to happen with them. They're more in bondage than me. Listen to me. When the same, we are in the same cart. Sin is sin. That's why God could say the first will be last and the last will be first. We are in the same cart. Actually, it is settling for that level of mediocrity that's keeping the church back. Because corporately we are called to have this, the, the, the spots and blemishes removed corporately. Not just sister and brother on this side or sister and brother on that side. But we okay because after all, you know, it's our personality. Listen to me. I studied psychology and I chose not to do my master's because I don't want to lie to people. You see this thing called personality where, well, that's how I am. That's how you make yourself. You are supposed to be Galatians 5, fruit of the Holy Spirit, all are we. Do you understand me? Now, some might talk more than others, but you really don't know because I'm telling you the truth. I love to be by myself and be quiet. Ask my husband, if you need to turn the TV, has listened, but I'm like, my God, I just can't stand it. But I let him play it because after all, he wants to see the news. I'm an introvert, psychological tomb that a lot of you bandy around, rubbish. I am one that likes to be quiet. But when I have to speak, I will speak. But I'm held to the same standard, all of us, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So this personality talk, is what causes us to remain in the sin because you know that's how I am when I vex, I vex. You vex. You are sinful. You are not supposed to be repetitively angry like that. And then you calm down, then you ask God for forgiveness, you ask everybody for forgiveness, and you go back to what you're doing. Saints, I'm taking my time here. I'm not going to go on for much longer. But I need us to understand this because this is what is keeping us back. We need to understand the root cause is the legal rights the demons have. How did the evil spirit enter? We've got to get to the root cause. And as I told you, you can pray and pray and pray. You could fast and fast and fast. You could pray and pray. But if you don't deal with the root, you will not change the fruit. I want us to know that what is keeping the enemy in, what's hold, what the enemy is holding on to, not how he came in, what he's holding on to, because he doesn't want to leave. We've got to identify those strongholds. If you're not identifying the strongholds and you're taught how to, this is what we do in the group sessions. This is, this is not like anything that is complicated. If you don't learn what he's holding on to, you will stay with him holding on. You could fast, you could pray. It may weaken, but it's not going to go. And that's why they're Christians some the same thing over and over and there's a measure of breakthrough but not where it's supposed to be but there's hope 
God is answering the cry of our heart. So I'm going to pause here for a minute and I'm going to say to you that remember Job because I could only give you all this in small doses. I'm far from finished. But by the time we finish this afternoon, we'll get a little bit more. Remember Job. Satan could not attack Job's life until he asked God permission. In other words, Satan didn't have a legal right. If he had a legal right, he would have attacked Job. Legal rights give the enemy the right. So when we are attacked over and over in certain areas, whether we like it or not, sin in our life, whether it's through the ancestral line or present sin or things that we don't know, sin has allowed the enemy to attack us in this particular way that we are saying we need so much prayer for. It has happened. But there's hope. You will get the breakthrough. But Job, Satan had to ask permission. And Satan is always roaming like a roaring lion, looking at each person and seeing what is the legal right I could use to come in. Remember Jesus said, when the evil one shall come, he will not find anything in me. So that's why whatever legal rights are there that came in, that I will explain further, because I have about, I have a, I have a few to, to tell you about, about, I have about six legal rights and six strongholds. There are probably more, but if you start with those six, you could start there. And you say, wow, I didn't realize this is a legal right. This is a legal right. This is a legal right. That's where we start. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to know, saints, that God has the last say in your life, but you have to want what he wants for you. What you want for yourself may not be what he wants for you. He wants you to be an oak of righteousness, to display his splendor. You may just want to be a Christian that says I'm a Christian, that talks about Jesus, that flits all over the place, but your aroma is not increasing. You've got to slow down and take some time. You see, the same time I had to take to sit down and study and make my notes, because I have so much in my head that I could write down and do my research. You've got to take time to take the same information and sit down and start to apply it. Since I'm telling you, people are getting breakthrough. You don't have to be the same way today, next year, this time. And it's not that anybody is technically bad, but there is not a walking in victory. And the understanding of discipling is not there. If you cannot help someone with a broken heart using the word of God, you are not discipling the person because we teach this all the time. But if you listen enough, just like those in the Bible study, when they listen to the book of Revelation, they listen again. Go and listen again to chapter 1. Go and listen again to chapter You can sit down and teach it. Because you've been taught. But from the time we hear, you've got to set the captives free. You've got to heal the brokenhearted. Not me, no. The devil has us seeing something else when we look in the mirror. What are you seeing today? What are you seeing today as I pause? Are you seeing oaks of righteousness or an oak of righteousness looking back at you? Are you seeing a vessel where God is saying, I want to increase? Child, I want to increase in you. You must decrease. This is what God wants you to know. It's possible. And there's a critical cry of God's heart in this season because there are souls that are dying and going to hell. You know, the gentleman that you remember, you remember Uncle Everett? 
मैं मंगला Listen, let me tell you something. I won't tell you all that was wrong with him, but let me tell you something. When you look back, I know because he's my uncle. You look back at pictures and you say, "Wow, what a life!" And you see how he started to look. You realize nothing is going to save anyone but Jesus. And he started coming, and then we prayed with him. Sometimes I see him in the mall. I couldn't care who see me. I prayed with whoever in the mall. I see him in the mall sitting down there. Stop, pray with him. He came sometimes here. He would sit there. We didn't even know he's taking it in. I'll tell you something. A person may not get deliverance of what has them bound, because the weeds and the wheat you can't tell. Eh, y'all, y'all know that, right? You all know you can't tell the weed from the wheat. Don't try and say who is a Christian and who isn't. Eh? Whoever is saying they're Christian, they're saying they're Christian. You'll, be, you'll tell by the fruit, but the weeds and the wheat, they grow together. And there are some people, they don't have the privilege of hearing what we hear all the time and receiving what we receive. But it's enough for them to say, I want Jesus. And cry out for Jesus. And he always used to tell me he never wanted to die in pain. He never wanted to die in pain because he was diagnosed with cancer. And I have to tell you, I am so happy we made the decision to ask Jesus to come into his heart, to take over his life. I think we stopped the service to do it because he can't couldn't stay till the end of the service. You know when you have your format and you can't change it, I'll be the first one to leave this church if it ever got so. We prayed with him. So he passed today. And I know he went to be with the Lord. And I know that the Lord granted him his wish. He did not suffer. Do you understand? Saints, we don't have time. He had to be taken to a home to live because he couldn't look after himself. We only had whatever few Sundays we had. Remember he used to come, then he stopped, then he started back? That's all the time we had with him. How much time do we have? How much time do we have? How much time do we have so that we can be used of God for someone who may not know him and they have limited time on this earth? And I'm so grateful. My only regret is I didn't go to see him more. The COVID came, I couldn't go. But that's what bothers me the most because I just want to go out there. I just want to be with the people. I don't want to be boxed in. But he went to be with the Lord. And I used to tell him, I say, you will know. I say, when you see you leave, your spirit man leaves, you will know what I was telling you was the truth. Because he grew up in a world where there was so much carnality, so much religion. He believed he was saved. But he wasn't saved. But when he came and we tried to reach and connect with him, and I see him in the mall, right? I have an opportunity. Let me stop right here now. Praise God. Saints, the rocks in our life are keeping us back from reaching the Uncle Everards and the Auntie Marys and those who might even not even be elderly people. We do not have a lot of time. We need to take time to let the Lord deal with us. A hummingbird, those who are experts, I'm not. Takes a little sip here and a sip there. Is that not so? They kind of take some food and they flit around. Listen, we are not hummingbirds. We are not hummingbirds. We can't function that way. So, Father, even as we take some more time, Father, with you and worship you, Father, I ask you that you would help us. Lord, you're not finished with us today, but... God, that we will understand, we've got to ask, Father, that you show us what let the enemy in, in the first place, and what is keeping it there, in the second place, that we may be set free, we would remove the legal rights, and we will tear down the strongholds, and we will be free, oaks of righteousness, a planting, of the Lord to display 
His splendor. Hallelujah.